Whew. Wow. It looks like we've got ourselves a big one. Hey, what's up guys and welcome yet again to another episode of Tech from the Far East. I've only just started looking at AIO loops recently with the first video not long ago looking at the ID cooling Auraflow 240. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can watch it by clicking here on the link to my left. Today I have yet another product from ID cooling, but one that covers more than just your CPU, well, figuratively and literally. In front of me here is the ID cooling Hunter Duet 2 a 360mm AIO loop that not only covers your CPU, but your GPU. Many of us PC building enthusiasts aren't strangers to the idea of an AIO cooler, so what is it exactly about this cooler that makes it special? Let's go over the details. Well, as I mentioned over in the intro, not only does the Hunter Duet 2 cool down the CPU, but also the GPU, and it does so with not just one, but two pump blocks. One on the CPU, and another on the GPU. Yes my friends, your GPU isn't left out in the cold, or maybe in this case, in the hot. Get it? it it's a pun. <laughs> um, yeah, never mind, moving on. Getting all that heat out is a 360mm rad, so dissipating the heat from both shouldn't be a problem. On to the specs of the cooling blocks. Both blocks are rated to push up to 96 liters of water per hour and make about 25 decibels of noise. Both the CPU and GPU blocks have a green LED illumination, so if you're rocking a Razer themed build, that should work well. Bear in mind that the GPU cooler's fan isn't controlled by the GPU itself, but hooked together with the GPU block, so it always has to run at full speed. As for the radiator block, as mentioned before, it's a 360mm radiator with a thickness of 27mm and a density of 18 fins per square inch. The thinness of the radiator might affect its cooling performance, but given that it's a 360mm rad, it shouldn't really impact performance all that much. ID Cooling does provide fans with this setup as well, three of their PL12025 fans. Mine came with blue frames. They are hydraulic bearing fans with a 600 to 2200 RPM range, do about 71.2 CFM of static pressure at about 14 to 35 decibels. They are also blue LED lit and have vibration dampeners on each corner to reduce vibration noises. I did mention that ID Cooling provided me this fans to be used with this radiator, right? Check this out. Because of the way these fans are designed with these accent edges around the sides, they actually have clearance issues when being used on a radiator on this radiator due to their dimensions now increasing from about 120mm to about 122mm, so about 2mm extra. My guess is that these fans just weren't made to be used with radiators and as such, this happens when you try to install these side by side. Yeah. It's not exactly an irreparable problem though as all you need is a big flathead file to trim it back down flush with the rest of the frame. Not a massive problem but still irritating nonetheless. It makes me wonder why they even chose to include these fans to begin with but uh, you know, moving on. Into the sound test part of the review, let's have a listen on how the CPU block sounds like in operation. Not as silent as the Auraflow 240, but shouldn't be too bad once it's in the case. Now let's have a listen to the GPU.
not too shabby given that we're listening to both the GPU pump and a smaller 80mm fan for cooling the VRMs. Let's move on to the fans and see how much noise and air they push. Pretty decent noise levels, nothing spectacular but nothing really to complain about. The fans push quite a bit of air given the noise so that's nice to see. Enough talk for now, let's get it set up. Installation process wasn't too bad as there are English instructions to get you going. But instructions alone aren't really enough as there is an order that you should take things in order to make your life easier. In this case, as you can see, I started working with the GPU, removing the existing heatsink fan, applying the VRM cooling, then installing the liquid cooling block onto it. From there, I installed the fans and the radiator to the case of the system. And finally, I removed the existing stock heatsink and replaced it with the CPU block portion. I found that this was the smoothest way in getting this AIO system installed and it worked out well for me. Once all of that was installed, I collected some performance numbers on how the Hunter Duet 2 performs. Here are the results starting with a baseline reading of the stock cooling. With a Ryzen 5 1600 on the Wraith cooler, a light overclock of 3.6GHz at 1.3V was applied. And as you can see, the system idled at about 31.5 Celsius on the CPU and on load went all the way up to an impressively toasty 87 degrees Celsius. As for the GPU, at stock, the Gigabyte GTX 1080 with a blower style cooler that I have here idled at 51 and also reached a wonderful temperature of 81 Celsius. So how do these numbers change when this AIO comes into the equation? The answer is phenomenally. On idle, the lowest recorded temperature that I got on the CPU were 25.75 Celsius and at most 58 Celsius. Over on the GPU side, on idle, I did a cool 31 Celsius and 51 Celsius on load. Since the CPU and GPU share the same loop though, with the CPU being stressed and the GPU idle, the GPU also increased to 38 Celsius. Not really a problem, but something to keep in mind, of course. Now we're on liquid cooling on both the CPU and GPU, so how much further can we get with overclocking? For this, I further OC'd the CPU to 3.8GHz at 1.325V and for the GPU, 
dial up the power limit and temp limit, and OC the core an extra 220, and memory an extra 210, respectively. The extra overclocks push the CPU temps up to 63.38 Celsius, and as for the GPU, it now sits at 53 Celsius. What happens when you stress both the CPU and GPU at the same time though? Strangely enough, it wasn't anything for the Hunter Duet 2 to stress about, giving about the same results of 63 and 53 respectively. Testing is done and conclusions have been reached, so it's time to wrap this review up. Let me just first get this out of the way. This cooler isn't perfect. The fans provided with this cooler were far from ideal. The installation process, while not bad, could have been made easier. And it's just a bit cumbersome to work with. But ID cooling is definitely onto something here. For $105, US normally you'd just be able to get yourself a 240mm AIO for your CPU, but here you're getting a 360mm radiator with a block for both your CPU and GPU with three fans to go along with that. Performance of the Hunter Duet 2 is nothing to scoff at, as it managed to cool both the CPU and GPU extremely well as well. So the saying of, you get what you pay for, doesn't really apply here, or are other companies just charging too much? Regardless of the answer though, one thing is for certain. This is definitely an easy recommendation for me. Just maybe save yourself the trouble and provide your own fans. So there you have it. If you're keen to give your PC an AIO liquid cooled upgrade for both your CPU and GPU, I think that the Hunter Duet 2 should definitely be on your shortlist. As usual, I hope you guys liked the review. Drop a comment down below on your thoughts, give it a like, and maybe consider subscribing to my channel for more similar content. My name is Yang aka Tech Rodent, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.